ever wondered what effects the changes brought about by COVID-19 would have had, join us for a presentation where we have a look at Morgan's metaphor for flux and transformation. Hi there, I'm Kevin Kruger, and today, together with my team, we are discussing the metaphor of Morgan of flux and transformation and the effect that COVID-19 had on the transformation of education in the 21st century. Let's meet the team. Myself, Kevin Kruger, Roxy Nia, Anna-Marie van Sale, Philip Sneeman, and Linda Janssen van Rensburg. We'll be covering the following topics. Change can be planned or it can happen spontaneously, out of control, chaotic. How we deal with these challenges is up to senior management and each individual. Transformation with a systems dynamic approach uses a complex web of positive and negative feedback to determine the next steps in the process. The chaos theory is used to explain how organizations transform in a complex and partnered a patent manner. Historically, transformation in education would be strategically planned, easily absolved, step by step known to us. Until the 26th of March 2020, education was going to change, but we didn't know it yet. A situation that pushed us from our normal to the edge of chaos. Suddenly, a new world filled with masks, filled with the unknown. Think about it. The past, remembering the good old days, how we used to do things, reflecting on the present, what we are doing today and how we are coping, and looking at the future. With these new changes, how are we going to cope? We're heading into a new world, and we will discover the impact of Morgan's metaphor of flux and transformation on the effects of COVID-19 on education. Good day, my name is Roxy I will be speaking about Morgan's metaphor, what is flux and transformation. The sole purpose of Morgan's book, Images of Organization, was to create a framework that could help leaders and or managers with their organization. As a leader and or manager, understanding how your organization functions can determine why it works or why it does not. The main purpose of an organization is to reach objectives. And if the organization does not, problem solving and analysis needs to take place. Morgan provides an insightful and graphical description in the form of eight metaphors. Machines, organisms, grains, cultures, political systems, psychic prisons, flux and transformation, and last but not least, instruments of domination. I will be focusing on the organization as a system of change and flux, or as previously stated, flux and transformation. This metaphor refers to the continuous transformation process. It's how organizations express themselves as a reflection of a larger transformation and transition process. It entails ongoing self-organizational adjustments in a dynamic equilibrium flow as well as systemic wisdom. Chaos, complexity, the butterfly effect, emergent features, dialectics, and contradiction are some of the terms used to describe its factors. Although the metaphor exists in the public sector, it is difficult to understand because each government has its own set of policies and programs. The public sector is dynamic and its structure and activities are continually changing. It's a system that's considered to be in a constant state of flux. 
Morgan state metaphors technically can be used in organizations to help them function and to solve problems. However, with any theory or literature, there are limitations. With flux and transformation, the main limitation is that it has no power and offers no power. Thus, managers have no influence. During the COVID-19 pandemic, policies and demands were made and principals had no power regarding the rapid changes bestowed on them. The reality within my school, my community, was that despite what the media are portraying, very little guidance and assistance was given. The pandemic exposed how ill-equipped our managers and even teachers were to deal with such an unprecedented circumstance. Change, or rather flux, is not usually as rapid as it was in the last two years, and it certainly took a toll on our sector. However, with everything, there are pros and no cons. One of the big positives that I took away was my build up of resilience and the fact that I have adjusted and upskilled myself rapidly in the last two years. With the fourth industrial revolution upon us, I definitely think that this was a push in the right direction. Good day, my name is Amri and I will be speaking about COVID-19, a pandemic from a local and global perspective. COVID-19, a pandemic from a local and global perspective. According to Brain and the Brain et al. 2020, on January 3, 2020, the World Health Organization designated the COVID-19 as an epidemic causing a public health emergency that's forced the world into to move into a lockdown of varying degrees that had an impact on healthcare, education, economies, and travel restrictions. As advised by the World Health Organization 2020, restrictions of lockdown included curfews, restricted movement, wearing of masks, isolation, severe travel restrictions, the use of hand sanitizer and social distancing. During the pandemic, school leaders and management were put in the perfect storm with no clear guidelines or instructions to guide them as per Harris and Jones 2020, causing leaders to make quick and rash decisions. The decision-making process as explained by Greg Yu was not followed we moved from identifying the problem to implementation without an overview and analysis. As per report by Kiwi and Osman for the Commonwealth, the following major consequences for education could be identified. Leadership and inequality. Prior to the pandemic, there were already disparities among schools, which were accentuated during lockdown. Communication between school and home. According to the report, the vast majority of students spent the majority of their time at school closed with little to no communications with their schools. Resource government, government deployment of hard and software connectivity and training required for remote learning is frequently unachievable. It can all be summed up in the next quote. Good day, I'm Philip Slema and I'm going to talk about how COVID-19 was the agent of change. How COVID-19 was the agent of change. COVID-19, the changing factor. Now, most school leaders themselves were unclear about how to respond to the directives they received. School leadership and teachers were expected to respond to ever-changing scenarios on an almost weekly basis to ensure that learning would still take place. Now, this was an important factor because learners had to wear masks, they had to sanitize regularly, they were screened every morning, and they also had to obtain the social distancing measurements. Slyhood 2020, page 4, suggested that the learning loss and the people skills that learners lost in schooling has an almost 1.5% average lower productivity in the GDP for the typical country. Now, this is an important factor to show us how important education in each and every country is, regardless of where that country may be. 
funding of education in underdeveloped countries. The most important factor here is that 11% of funding was spent on education before the pandemic struck, and this was expected to drop by 6% due to expenditure focusing on the health sector. Now, this is an impact on the effectiveness on education because in underdeveloped countries, a 6% loss due to focusing on the health sector is a massive drop in the amount of money and resources that you can access and the resources that became scarce. Slager 2020, page 14, states online learning packages were made available. But in some countries, like South Africa, it was even more difficult to do as a large amount of learners in remote areas was with little to no internet connection. Um, teachers went as far as to delivering the, the materials to the children through courier services that were sent as essential packages. The new normal in everyday education. The most important fact here is that schools must have sourced intensive cleaning and sanitizer to clean and deep clean their classrooms and to sanitize the children every now and again. This costs schools a lot of money, which could have been spent on sourcing resources for the curriculum. Schools also had to make use of the one day on, one day off system where learners came to school every second day because of the limited space of classrooms. This meant that some learners that lived far away could not find lifts. This meant that they would be absent and also miss class and school time. The COVID-19 showcased new dilemmas because of the screening, the screening systems that must have been put in place, which sometimes some of the systems cost the schools money if they could not have it sponsored. The wearing of masks and social distancing became the new normal in schools. School leadership in pandemic times. Here I stated five important factors that influenced school leadership and the change it brought to school leadership in pandemic times. The first point. The change COVID-19 brought was called irreversible by many because leaders now must have clear visions of what they want to achieve in their schools. They must develop their workers, especially in technology, because of the online schooling that has now taken place. Platforms such as WhatsApp became the new classroom for those with uh, limited access to data resources. They must develop their workers again, developing the workers because they must use technology now in classes or at home when they have to do homework when learners are not at school. They must build a positive school culture. Positive school culture in difficult times is utmost important to make sure that you always have a positive atmosphere when the teaching learning process demands it. Second one, new and improved and relooked at programs for leadership must be developed for the ongoing change that COVID-19 brought. Leadership theories must be redeveloped in difficult times. Leaders of the new age must have proper self-care in order to help others. They must look after themselves. School leaders must be more technologically savvy, savvy as we mentioned above. Leader must foster a relationship with their direct community to empower, protect and add knowledge to the community that they serve. Good day, I'm Mena Yasifarenko and I will discuss how COVID-19 has transformed education.
The COVID-19 pandemic forced school leaders and educators to evaluate how and adjust to a new way of delivering content in unprecedented times. This included being more innovative and using more technology. Although some schools had pre-pandemic used technology in the classrooms, such as Microsoft Teams and Google Classrooms, many learners and staff were reluctant to embrace it. Within the first few weeks of lockdown, teachers across the world received remote training in the use of online platforms. We concur with Robinson Judge, who state that technology perpetuates change in schools and that competition, such as with online schools, forced a faster rate of change than ever before. It was a risk to do everything differently, but many schools found that with the risk came great reward. Finan and Levine, 2000, stated that change can be remarkable and when added pressure is applied, with the right training and tools, it can lead to fundamental improvements to meet outcomes. And this was sure to be the case in the first few months of the pandemic. Leaders and staff alike were forced to think outside the box and become more creative, agile, and take risks in their teaching approach. All parties involved acquired new skills and built their confidence in using technology. Assignments were being submitted and marked online, notes were posted instead of being printed, and parents' evenings were often conducted in the comfort of one's own home. In the schools that could teach remotely, absenteeism essentially fell away, as learners and teachers could connect remotely. More leadership development occurred during this time, as many educators had to step up and share their expertise and talents to meet the school's outcomes, which is supported by Harrison Jones, who state that new leadership order has emerged as there were no precedents for the school leaders to build on or reflect on. Educators found themselves printing less, doing fewer assessments, but of better quality. We also found that the reflecting of our own lessons as we could watch our own recordings, and this attributed to our professional development. It must be noted that the continuous adaptation and adjustments to protocols caused both the teachers and leaders to continuously adapt, and because it is harder to deal with unplanned changes, Cummins, Bridgman and Brown, it led to a higher level of anxiety, stress, workload and burnout for staff. We also experienced more teachers resigning to move to fully online platform schools. Frustration was further enhanced by load shedding, which impacted learning and caused technological challenges. The social inequality became larger in privileged urban versus rural schools, which meant that many learners, especially those who had no means of attending online lessons or getting any assistance from their teachers, were further disadvantaged, and one will not yet know the impact of this for still some time to come. Educators also experienced many learners losing their ability and independence to think and do things by themselves. Many learners also found that online lessons to be impersonal and felt isolated and despondent at home as they did not feel free to ask questions online. And although the lessons were recorded for learners to go back to, but it also meant that more learners were procrastinating and lacked the diligence to keep up with the workload. Many learners still have not caught up with the missed work and subsequently are struggling to keep up with the workload, especially grade 10 to 12s. Returning to school also had its challenges, with social distancing, continuous screening of learners and having screens up in class. Learner contact time, as we knew it, was over. Educational researchers Harrison Jones, 2020, highlighted that the effect of the COVID-19 outbreak has had such a major impact on school leadership and that more research is going to be done on the matter to establish the true repercussions thereof. It is imperative to acknowledge that throughout all this change, it was the human dimension of teaching with the use of technology that made this transformation and changes successful. Harrison Jones, 2020. And this was seen throughout the commitment of the majority of the staff to adapt and still show humaneness in caring for the learners' well-being. Looking ahead, we know that as school leaders and teachers, we will increasingly need to be more technologically savvy and better skilled and adapted to teach remotely, as education as we knew it before the COVID-19 pandemic no longer exists. It is the organisations who reflect on flux and transformation, the ones that are able to adapt who will evolve as they know that their existence relies on the internal and the external surroundings. Thank you.
the degree of the long-term harm caused by the closing of schools and early childcare centers to children's holistic development cannot yet be assessed. This transformation to education has led to a further imbalance in the work expectation for educators and especially the management of schools. The change in how education is taking place has had a detrimental effect on our students' interpersonal skills and mental development. However, we cannot ignore the positive emphasis placed in, on mental health and self-care. In conclusion, when we consider all the transformations that was caused by COVID-19, it creates a good prospective foundation for future reflection of management and leaders in dealing with rapid change and crisis management.